They like to look at how to solve a nonlinear circuit, specifically a diode circuit, using least squares. Least squares is one way to solve n equations and unknowns in Scilab. And as an example of the circuit I want to look at, consider the following diode circuit. I've got two voltage nodes, so I've got two equations for two unknowns. The equations are the current has to add to zero. Once I know the voltages, if I guess V1, V2, I can calculate the current through the diode. That comes from the diode equation for the first diode, and the voltage drop across the second diode gives you the diode equation for the second diode. I can then do my voltage nodes and say the current from the node has to add to zero at V1, and the current from the node has to add to zero at V2, give me these two equations. Now in Scilab, the way I like using Scilab is first type the equations by hand. Take a guess, such as V1 is 2 volts, V2 is 1 volt. Once I know the voltages, I can tell you the current through the diode from the diode equation. And I usually get this wrong, so that's why I like doing it in the editor first. There's your current. Arrow up brings up the previous commands. Equation for the second diode, which is function of V2. And now I want to write these two equations. The voltage node equation equals zero. Rather than zero, if I got V1, V2 correctly, the answer would be zero. If I'm incorrect, it will be something non-zero. Let's call that an error. I get the first equation. Well, the first equation, there's the current, doesn't quite add to zero. And the second equation, also doesn't quite add to zero. Once I get those in there, I can copy those into a function. So let's do a copy. diode example. In Scilab, I have the keyword function. This name here says I've got a subroutine called diode example. I'm going to pass to it x. x is going to be a 2 by 1 array. The first entry I'll interpret as V1. The second entry, as I guess, be V2. Then the equations I had, erasing the mistakes I made. I now know the current through the first diode. Throwing in a semicolon, so I don't want to print out the results. I know the current through the second diode. Once I know those currents, I can calculate the two errors. And now I want to create a function j, so that j is minimized when the error is zero. And one way to do that is take the sum squared error. And you're done. Now to save this in Scilab, to execute, save, and execute. What that did is that just created a new function in MATLAB or Scilab called diode example. Then go into Scilab. In this case sensitive. I'm going to pass to it the guess to one, and it tells me this is the sum squared error occurrence. With that I can guess, guess again. Let's try 2.1, 1.2. Okay, that got worse. Let's go the other way around. 1.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 
Yeah, that's still a little bit worse. Or I can let Scilab do the guessing for me. So I'm going to return two numbers. What this does is, here's the function in least squares. Find the minimum of the following function. The function is defined right here. It's the subroutine diet example. Here's my initial guess. Tell it go, and it says done. The best you could do is 1.41 volts, 0 0.707 volts. So V1 is the first one. Here's V2. I can now find the current through the diode. Using the arrow up arrow, arrow down command, I know V1, V2. The first diode is 77 milliamps. ID2, arrow up, is 81 milliamps. That's how to use Scilab and the function least square to solve equations and unknowns, in this case the diode example.